I'm making a high-res vid, man, because I thought, shit, how often are you going to sit here? I'm sitting under this tree. <laughs> That's where I'm sitting. That's where I'm sitting. That's where I'm sitting. What? No, sitting. Why is that hard to understand? That's where I'm sitting. That's where I'm sitting right now. I'm sitting there. It's just where I'm sitting. It's okay. It's just where I'm sitting. Sometimes, when you're sitting somewhere, and you're feeling lonely, like me, I like to play a game. It's a game I call Nicky Knock. Nicky Knock, Nicky Knock. And you're like, what is that? And I'm like, Nicky Knock, Nicky Knock. And you're like, what's that, dude? What's Nicky Knock? And I'm like, Nicky Knock. Nicky Knock, and you're like, fuck you, Nicky Knock. You fucking Nicky Knock, motherfucker. <laughs> Crazy, homeless looking piece of shit. It's like a throne right here. What a great view. You know, no one has ever sat here. I promise you. Perched. I have to wait for those old people anyway, so. Psychologically speaking, feeling safe for some people, <coughs> into me, into my <coughs> old age, is highly contingent. And that's something I have to deal with every day. along with drinking enough water. Which is key to the rest of your day. I like to drink it within an hour of eating my protein and fat and salt. And it's a good combo. Half hour to an hour, just get that water down. I wonder how long these stones have been here. I'm comfortable. It's not raining. Trees are amazing. This feels like Hawaii sitting here. So this is Hawaii. This is mm, this isn't toxic. I got the moss, the trees, the stones, the river, a nice trail, a little mist in the air. I'm healthy. some coffee this is I call this my middle-class thermos because it identifies me as a safely developed middle-class person and middle-class people they need licenses they have to have papers insignia in your behavior so that if you are weird you can signal a sufficient middle-class nature to be beyond suspicion I'll give you an example if you're a good middle class person and you're jogging at five in the morning or three in the morning or six in the morning and it's dark out, 
most middle class people won't worry about you. If you're female, walking your dog, you look normal, middle class, you're fine. But, to any of us maybe, if you don't look the way you're supposed to, it could be scary. One might wonder, what are you doing here? You know, if you're not wearing $2,000 of biking clothing and training to be part of the peloton, the fact that you're riding a bike doesn't really mean much, does it? Oh, well I'm riding a bike. Well, you don't look like you're just on a bike ride. When middle class people get older and they go for a bike ride, they look like they're professional bike riders. They look like middle class people on a bike ride. They don't just start lowering their fashion codes. Middle class people don't even go outside their home without looking a certain way or putting on their makeup, not even to put out the garbage. And I'm not saying that's wrong because cultures have codes that make you feel better and more secure within those codes, within that culture, in a ways that add to your other physical security. It makes sense, right? I'm talking about the mind being a sophisticated thing. Everyone's mind is sophisticated. Humans are bound to find sophisticated ways to feel secure. It makes sense, right? Now, if they look more secure than I am, and they know more about how to be secure, and they want to, and they've learned to care about dressing that way and living that way, they find the time to look very nice middle class people. I never find the time to look normal. Get a job, collect the money, find the time to go shopping, get a haircut, you know, start talking the talk and walking the walk. And any walk, any talk, whatever, whatever the going talk is. So if you go on YouTube or dating sites, popular videos, which are not wrong for being popular. In fact, they're popular for a reason, among which is included, they know how to speak the language of their audience. They know the market, they know if people are looking at this, then they'll look at me, we do these things, and then that's all we have to do. Better than doing a thousand random things in your video, do a hundred things that are more likely to be within the realm of what people expect. Then it's easier for you, and it's more enjoyable for them. In this way, you see the constraints upon human communication in order to have the highest rated level of communicative success, 3.3 million views. I would say you've communicated something, and yet within a very restricted lexicon that makes it easier for you and ostensibly for me, like a micro-economy. I'm giving up something, I'm adding suspension of disbelief, you're getting something that with a minimal effort you can claim a certain amount of my attention without disrupting or perking or peaking any kind of critical defense as to what we could demand more of you given what you're already doing for us. Like, you could ask more of me. You could say, Landon, um, we want to see more of this. If you're, if you're this smart, do this, do this, do this, don't do this, don't upload that, do this, don't talk this way, talk about this, find out how to dress, find out how to get a GoPro or something. But in an anthropological sense, I'm being anthropological, so I invite you to be anthropological and say, look, whatever I'm doing is just another human being. You don't go to study the pygmies and tell them how to live. You don't say, you don't go to the Galakopos, Galakopoka, Galak, pick a lagalo. You don't go to the Galakopos, Gilligalicopus Islands. <laughs> I don't know. I think that just means, isn't that just like an island chain or something? Anyway, um, you don't go there um, and then tell them how to live. Strap on a GoPro, you can get millions of views watching you milk your mother, you know? Or milk a dead cow. Like in some parts of Nairobi, you can milk a dead cow. Next on YouTube. So, I mean, it's just me. It's just me. 
my camera lives, dies, gets wet, doesn't. I mean, it's just chance that I even have a camera. It's freaking chance that YouTube even lets me use YouTube. It's a freaking chance I'm still alive. It's a freaking chance that nobody's interrupted me. It's a freaking chance that I'm going to be a little happier today than when I started. I take a chance on everything. I take a chance on me. My life is a constant accident. It's a crime scene, and I'm trying to figure it out without, without it, while at the same time reinforcing the crime. Because no matter what I do, it'll always be expected by the crime, absorbed by the crime. The crime will always win, no matter what I do. The crime has won. Tell everyone the crime has won. Why fight it? Why investigate the crime of civilization? Why find the true fidelity of our relationships in the fidelity of the knowledge of time? As it may sing upon our children's lips. As it may stay the rusted coils of our sleepless mouths at night. I promised you poetry. And I promise, as sure as my balls are not showing when I wear these pants, I will give you poetry. I put on my good pants for you today because I realized that a lot of my videos include my crotch. By no intent of my own, it just seems to happen that way. It just happens that way. I'm trying to control it, but in this situation, it's hard to avoid. I apologize. You know, maybe you like my crotch. Maybe you like, show us more crotch videos. I want to look at your asshole more often. <laughs> okay. I'm calling in on account of two stones, so I got to go. Oh, this thing is still on. That'll be interesting to watch later when I get home. I like those kind of face-free videos. In other words, I can't see my face while I'm talking. Oh, well, back to the usual touristy stuff. This is awesome. I mean, look at... I don't want to be rude. I mean, people might make me see... I, I, like, they basically think I've made my, a spectacle of myself by sitting here, which I have, I suppose. But look at this. It's better to see the spectacle around us. It's like... The you like the uterus, you've got algae. I mean, I love trees that grow on the side of cliffs. You gotta respect that, eh? I mean, wow. The uh the power of life confounds my expectations when I look at places like this. Many I have many gay appointments with nature every day, I like to think. I'm gonna tell someone that one day. I keep these little phrases to amuse myself and others. What do you do? Oh I keep many gay appointments in the wild places of parks. <laughs> Okay. I mean, they'll think I'm gay. Well, they'll, so they'll, if they're a woman, they'll be like, oh, okay. Um, yeah, well, uh, right on. I mean, I already have a lot of gay friends, so I'm just looking for, I'm looking for dick. Um, are you thinking of like maybe thinking about getting it between the uprights, you know, like a real man or? No, no, the uprights. I'm not really a football fan myself. I don't see my whole life's purpose as much as some considerable pleasure could find its purpose in this way, like a kind of church steeple moving out of the nave and into the ronger of God's asshole, and bringing everyone with it as they obey the altar of human sacrifice and bring so many debts and costs to bear upon their private places. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. I just like thought maybe if you're willing to, you know, step up. And I'm telling you, I just, I don't base my whole life on getting into that that part of your body. Well, you can do me anal, 
and I like give a seriously good blowjob. It's like, I don't want to, I'm sure you do. I mean, that is arousing, I must say. Well, why don't you just let me do it? No. I mean, no, thank you. I mean, yes, but like absolutely in any other way, like in my fantasies, like I'm going to masturbate like a ding dong and a fucking mango tree for the next three years, just based on what has already happened in our short little meeting. <laughs> And I'm going to have to keep it short, you know what I mean? Because i got to go. But you owe, I feel like I owe you a lot of thanks for just absorbing me in something that I think, well, likely to give me a venereal disease might have given me greater pleasure and opened greater channels of my naughties and higher chakras than anything ever. Because the more I think about it, it just seems like, why wouldn't you? And how wonderful it could be. Because the pleasure is swimming through my mind and making me think that anything's possible if I just get inside your little tidy bowl. And I just, I'm fighting that. I'm fighting it. I'm fighting it so hard because I don't want to. But have a good day. <laughs> All right, I'm standing upright. That's always a good sign. <laughs>